Hello everyone, this is Amber with Story Chasing and this is Season 2, Episode 9. And today I'm going to show you how to operate a cassette toilet, empty it, and then you can determine if a cassette toilet is for you over a traditional black tank. So something very interesting happens when you start RVing. You start becoming very aware of your water consumption and also how often you go number one and number two. <laughs> it's just a fact of life when we RV. In a traditional home, a sticks and bricks home, you don't really have to think about your water and sewer consumption or usage. You actually can just turn on the water and you instantly get water unlimited supply and you're hooked up to the sewer so you can just go to the bathroom like any time of the day or the night and not have to worry about it because you are hooked up typically to the city sewer and water system. Now with RVing, it's a little bit different. You are very aware of your water and sewer usage because it's limited. Your tanks are limited. They only hold so much. So you are very aware of what is happening, not only how much water you use, but also how often you go number one and number two. So today we're actually going to focus on sewer usage and I'm going to show you how to use the cassette toilet, which on my Hymer sits right here in this particular box. So first let's start inside of the bathroom so I can show you how the cassette toilet works inside the Hymer. So first thing about using the cassette toilet is I do not put toilet paper inside of the toilet. In fact, I didn't even do that in my last RV. It just keeps things where they're not clogged. Instead, I put them inside of a trash receptacle and then once that gets full, I throw it away inside a larger bin somewhere at a park. The other thing is that the cassette toilet actually swivels and the swivel is so that you can either get comfortable while you're inside of the bathroom or when you're taking a shower. And then this is how you flush the toilet with this particular little lever and it opens up a blade inside the toilet. The next thing is the indicator lights. It only shows when it's full. It does not show in between stages of fullness. And then you hit the blue button to actually provide water inside of the bowl and flush it all out. Inside of the bowl, this is the blade that I was talking about here. It's down at the very bottom. It's kind of hard to see, but I'll show you as I hit the lever a couple of times and you can see it kind of go back and forth. And that allows anything inside the toilet to drain inside of the cassette toilet. Now that I've shown you the inside, we're gonna to go to the outside and we open up the box with the key to get inside and just pull out the cassette toilet with the orange handle. It's pretty simple and it actually has a little handle as you can see right there that will pull up and you can drag it like a suitcase. It has little wheels on the bottom so that drags pretty nicely. It's 4.6 gallons and it does get a little bit heavy if you, get it, if you let it get too full. So try to empty it about every four to five days. Then to empty it, you just unscrew the little nozzle and very carefully, you will dump it inside of the sewer tank. An important thing to remember once you get it tilted over is to go ahead and hit that little orange button that releases the pressure. Make sure you do it only after you've tilted it over because if you don't, you will get stuff all over you from that little pressure button. And I have done that before, it's pretty gross. And then I just give it a quick kind of turn around to get everything out from on the sides and the top. And then you just need to rinse it out. So here I actually have a hose and I'm going to give it a quick rinse. I don't put too much water in there. I don't want to get it too full because it'll be really heavy, but just enough so that you can swish it around a little bit and just kind of clean off the sides and the top. And then we're going to dump it one more time. Release that pressure button again. Remember, do not release the pressure button when it's not tilted over. And then after we're done doing that, just give it another turn real quick to get off everything from the sides and the top. And then now it's time for the chemicals. These chemicals require about two ounces inside of the tank and it helps to keep the odors out and keeps everything clean inside. And then you just have to add some water to it probably about another two to four ounces, maybe not too much. And then you wanna give it another quick turnaround so that it gets all over the sides and the top and bottom of the cassette toilet tank. 
Then we just have to pop it right back into the side of the Heimer. Make sure the handle's down, close the lid, and lock it back up, and we're good to go. It's very, very easy. So let's talk about the pros and cons of the cassette toilet. There aren't that many cons. I feel like there's quite a few pros. One of the pros of having the cassette toilet is that it can save you money if you find places to dump the tank that cost you. I typically try to find free places, so this may impact me only in the wintertime when it is harder to find places to dump the tank that um, would cost you. So with the cassette toilet, you can actually dump in your typical spaces like your RV parks, your state parks, an RV park, anything like that, but you have the added benefit of being able to take it to any bathroom, whether it's in a house or a pit toilet. You can take it to a rest area and dump it in the toilet there. It's really compact. You can roll it over there and then just dump it really quick into the toilet and be done. And that leads me to the second pro is that it's very fast and easy to dump the tank. Another thing that I love is that you don't ooh, have to deal with the stinky slinky hoses from the black tank. Now, I had it down pretty well in my 26 foot RV, but it still stunk and you still had to make sure you kept it separated from everything. So not having that actually frees up storage and you no longer have to worry about where your sewer hoses are at. The other added benefit of the cassette toilet is that there's no having to rinse out the black tank like I had to do in the 26 foot RV where you would have to stick the hose down the toilet or you would have to do a flush from the other side where you actually connected the hose under the RV, hooked a hose up to that and then ran rinse water through it. So you no longer have to do that anymore. The other great thing about the cassette toilet is you no longer have the poo pyramid. Have you ever had to deal with that? Thankfully I didn't, but I heard some pretty bad horror stories about it. And it basically is when you don't have enough water in your black tank and the poo just keeps piling up and up and up, hence poo pyramid. And eventually you have to really do some deep cleaning inside your black tank to get all of that out. So you don't have to do any of that with this cassette toilet whatsoever. So now for the cons. While there's not that many, I don't feel like they're deal breakers, at least for me. One of the things that I noticed is I've been using the cassette toilet for the last three months. For some reason, it builds up condensation on the inside of the toilet lid. I still haven't figured out why. I've asked some fellow Heimer RVers about it. They also have the same issue. Some people think that it's because you're in higher humidity areas, but I'm not 100% sure just yet because I was down in drier climates and I was still getting it. So I haven't figured that out. It's not a big deal. It's just that sometimes if you sit down on the toilet your shirt might get a little bit wet from the condensation on there so i always just try to clean it off and then dry it really well and that seems to work sometimes i'll just leave the lid open if i'm not moving around and that way it stays dry so another con if you even consider it a con is that you do have to empty it a little bit more because it is so small it's 4.6 gallons compared to my other rv that was 23 gallons so I can't go as long without dumping. For me, it usually takes anywhere between four to five days before it has reached capacity and I have to actually go and find a place to dump the cassette toilet. But again, it's not that big of a deal. There's so many places to dump it. It just isn't a big deal for me. So one of the things that I would definitely consider a con is the sensors to tell you what the capacity of fullness is on the cassette toilet. This only tells you when it's completely full. So it has happened in the middle of the night where I've had to go to the bathroom and the sensor comes on and it's full. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, I don't want that to happen. <laughs> so you have to improvise a little bit. Um, there are times when if I'm out boondocking, I will go outside instead of actually using the tank, which seems to you know cut down on me having to actually go and dump the tank as much. So here is a funny, not so funny story. When I first got the Heimer, I didn't know how to use a cassette toilet. There's not a lot of information out there except for maybe a couple of videos. And there was nothing that actually said anything about this particular thing that I'm about to tell you. And so I made a really bad mistake of dumping the tank and getting nasty stuff all inside the holding tank area. So here's what happened and here's what I figured out about the whole situation. 
So inside of the toilet, there is a blade. And every time you move that lever back and forth to flush the toilet, that blade opens up. Well, I knew that because I would go to the bathroom and I would, you know, move the lever over. But what I didn't know is that there was not a secondary lever on the cassette toilet. It's the same lever or blade on the inside. What happened was I went to go to the bathroom. The toilet said that it was full. It was early in the morning and I was in a city, so there was nowhere for me to go, but I had to really go to the bathroom. So I went ahead and used the bathroom and the toilet and I didn't flush it. And I thought, well, I'll just go find the dump site, go dump, and then I'll flush the toilet afterwards. So that's what I did, except when I went to go pull the cassette toilet out, all of the stuff that was in the toilet dropped into the holding area where the cassette toilet sits in. So it was really disgusting. I thought it was gonna throw up all over the place several times. So yeah, don't do that one. <laughs> It was not very fun, and I'm sure I said a zillion curse words while I was cleaning it up. So, ugh. anyways, you don't want to do that. Well, that is it for the operation of the cassette toilet and the do's and don'ts, pros and cons. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a video. Bye, everyone.